up, guys? Team Stamp West, Discraft Underground Team Captain, and we're back with another one of our Underground members. And tonight we have Luke Callahan. What's up, everyone? Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, thanks so much for being here, Luke. I know you're usually on the other end of this camera, so we're gonna put you. We're gonna turn things around on you, and uh, we'll have some fun and get to know you a little bit better. So we want to just start out, just tell us a little bit about yourself, kind of where you're from, uh, maybe what your local disc golf club is, and uh, just, just kind of some things about you. Yeah, so my name's Luke Callahan. I'm 16 from Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, I grew up playing football, actually, most of my life, kind of switched to disc golf. Like three years ago, I think, is when I officially decided that I wanted to take it more seriously. Um, local disc golf league is Cattle. Love all those guys. Capital Area Disc Golf League. Um, they're always super supportive and helpful. So thanks to everyone in that league. Nice. That, that leads me to a question because we have some other players uh, on the underground really that are from all sorts of different sports. Playing football, what do you feel like translated over to disc golf for you? That's actually a good question because I don't really throw many like overhands or anything. So <laughs> I guess just athleticism, I don't know. Being able to like, I can go out and play so much disc golf every day and like muscle memory type stuff um everything like that yeah 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 we've got a lot of people on the underground we've come to find out who played soccer as well was soccer a part of your athletic background at all i mean i always played it growing up because all my friends played so i would play with nice. them in their yards or whatever but i never played on a team or anything i gotcha it's so interesting that there, i feel like uh really you can play just about any sport and find something even if it's just the athleticism that translates over to disc golf and I think that's why it's such a such a sport for everybody because you really don't have to have a specific set of skills you know like football basketball uh tennis for example all have very specific sets of skills and really you can take stuff from all of those and bring it over to disc golf right uh so this year's kind of been a weird year obviously with COVID and the ongoing pandemic and so you know you live a little bit different life obviously than we do so tell us what this year has been like you know both in disc golf and outside for you yeah, so I actually got a good amount of tournaments in before COVID. I think I had six this year before COVID even started. So yeah. I was ready. I had so much stuff planned. Then obviously that all got canceled. But it was weird not going to school. I got to play so much more disc golf. <laughs> um, I don't know. It was it was actually helpful kind of because I got to do field work and putting, stuff that you kind of put off during the season that you don't really want to deal with. It made me focus on that a little more. And nice. especially the YouTube channel. It helped a lot with that. Yeah. Yeah. I think one, one of the interesting things I've heard from uh, some of the other kids that, that are into disc golf is that schools are still trying to push PE and still yeah. getting out for physical activity. And I've heard more and more people using that time to get out to the disc golf course. <laughs> yeah. Which I, I think is really interesting. And that's kind of something that you said too, is it's afforded you some more time to get out to the course. You know, has, has that been kind of uh, with school or has it kind of still been separate from school? It's it's been separate from school. This year I'm actually homeschooled because of everything that's going on. So it's mm -hmm. it would be a lot easier and it's pretty much the same as it would have been. So Sorry. I'm doing it myself, but yeah. Um I don't know. I wish I wish I went to school so that I could try and get my class out. I think that would be a lot of fun. I think Vincent Goodman actually got his class to do something disc golf related during PE. Yeah. Um I always thought that was a super fun idea, but I never really got to. Yeah. Well, maybe you can invite everybody out for a uh, a recess if you will, out to the yeah. <laughs> out to the local field or the right. school football field even and uh, get out and throw. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, so we know that you have, you know, a big mission and a passion for junior disc golf. Uh, obviously, you're still in the, the junior classification yourself. Um, tell us, you know, kind of what inspired that and sort of what drives you to uh, promote that and push for it. Um, honestly, football. I grew up playing football, like I mentioned earlier, and there's obviously so many kids around the world that play football or basketball or soccer, all these big sports, and no one really knows about disc golf. When I first started playing, I went out to the course, and there were, like, no kids. In fact, there still aren't many kids, which is why, like, I think a year and a half ago, a year and six months ago-ish, I decided to make the YouTube channel just based on trying to grow the sport for more juniors because I wanted more kids playing the sport so that we could have bigger fields and junior events. Like you go to a B tier and or an A tier and there's like one or two kids in the junior division. So no one ever wants to sign up because you want to sign up in intermediate or advanced so that you can play against yeah. more competitors. So that really sparked it all. I just wanted to have more kids in the sport and I think it would be really fun to have 
like the ne- the next level, I guess, of pros. Yeah, and I, I think that's an interesting point. You know, we're starting to see, uh, you know, some of what I'll, I'll consider kids coming into the sport, and really like the emergence of Kyle Klein this year, who yeah. I think is just just eighteen himself. Uh, I I think is really the tip of the iceberg. I, I think that the next generation of golfers, yourself included, are really building your game for the future. Uh, we're seeing courses get longer. We're seeing greens get more difficult. And uh, for you guys coming up, that's going to be the new normal. And right. for golfers who have been playing for, you know, 15 or 20 years, they're having to change their game and to adapt their game to throwing farther and uh, running bigger putts and, and having more putting range. Uh, do you, do you kind of see in the junior classification that's true kind of across the board that, that kid, they're sort of building their game for that, uh, you know, big distance, big putts? I for sure do. And I mean, especially kids like building their all around game, like most of my friends that are juniors that are actually like taking it seriously and at the next level, um, they have a forehand, they have a backhand, they're good at putting. Whereas you see some of the top pros, even like James Conrad, who doesn't throw really forehands at all. Um, guys like that, that they grew up at a different time point. So they didn't like develop their full game because they didn't need it. And whereas now and in the future, you're going to need a full game. So I see all these kids with every part of their game. Yeah. First off, that's terrifying. <laughs> that the next generation is, is uh, I think that there's just so much potential. And, and I'm so excited to really see over the next, you know, one to three years, more kids like Kyle Klein that are, are coming out and they're getting on tour, or maybe even to just a couple of the Disc Golf Pro Tour events regionally. And just really see what that that kind of next generation now of talent brings. Uh, so we want to talk a little bit about the North Carolina Junior Disc Golf Championships, which you helped organize. Did you TD it as well? I didn't actually. I did play in the okay. event. Um, my friend nice. Brian Berman actually did it. His son is Judah, who's really good. I think he's 11 or 12. Can't weigh more than 70 pounds, <laughs> and he can throw like 330 feet. It's Jeez. scary how good he is. Like, he's, he's going to be beating me and a lot of other kids in the future. So his dad actually reached out to me and my dad and told us that he started it. So I thought it was super cool. My dad had the idea, actually, of pushing it on the YouTube channel and Instagram and everything like that to get as many juniors there as possible because he ran the same event last year for the first time. And I think a total of 25 kids showed up. And this year – with the YouTube channel pushing it and Instagram and everything like that, I think we had 60 kids come out, which wow. was pretty awesome because there's not that many kids in my area. So that yeah. was super. Yeah. I mean, you look at some of the big disc golf uh, junior championships and 60 is a, a great number. So that's really sure. impressive. Um, I kind of want to touch, you know, you talked about your dad and uh, the other dad sort of setting this up. And I kind of want to just touch on the importance of parents getting involved with their kids, especially with disc golf. You know, disc golf is predominantly – you know, kind of middle or older uh, guys that are playing. And so I feel like it's maybe a little bit intimidating for kids to kind of come out to the course. And kind of like you said, you were one of very few kids, if not the only kid when you first started going out. Uh, yeah. What, you know, what kind of role has your dad and your parents played in your disc golf journey so far? Well, I mean, to start off, he, he does everything for me pretty much. He pays for my events, drives me there, picks me up, takes me to the course. He always plays with me. I think he loves it just as much as I do. So it's super awesome support-wise. He's always there for me, him and my mom both. But especially my dad always pushing me, making sure I'm in the field, making sure I'm putting. Um, if like he, he really helps me a lot. He helps me edit YouTube videos. He films all my YouTube videos for me. So really, I, I wouldn't have the YouTube channel, and I wouldn't be in all these events without him. So I think it's super important for all the kids, or if the parents are watching this, um, I mean, you, you got to start them. Like, eventually in the future, 17, 18, they'll be able to do it all for themselves. But when they're younger, you got to sign them up for the events. you got to take them. And I think that's super important and awesome of all the parents out there that do that for their kids. Yeah, I think it's very similar to a lot of other sports, whether it's soccer, basketball, uh, football even, where you're involved with your kids, you're going to the games, you're cheering them on, uh, you're getting them to practice, you're getting them the equipment that they need. I think disc golf is so similar, and a lot of people maybe overlook the importance of uh, the role of parents with with junior disc golf. So yeah, I, I know especially with the underground, we have a lot of incredibly supportive parents, yours included, and um, I, I think it just really amplifies what you're able to do when you have that that assistance. For sure. Nice. Uh, so you kind of mentioned your YouTube channel and 
it's done really great this year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you've well surpassed us, and uh, I expect that to continue for you. Uh, and you've had some really great content. So tell us a little bit more, a little bit more about your YouTube channel, and uh, you know what your mission is with that, and what people can find there. Yeah. So like I said, I started it like a year and a half ago, just trying to grow the sport for juniors, and then I got support from people of all ages. Wasn't expecting it. I think I just hit a thousand subscribers. Um around the beginning of this year, maybe like towards the end of last year, and I'm already at 4,000 now, so the support has been unreal. But really, I was just trying to do it to help grow the sport for juniors, and then all these people started supporting me, and now, I mean, obviously, it helps me with amazing sponsors like you guys, and I mean, it's super awesome when every time someone comes up to me at the course, and they're like, are you the disc golf kid? And I'm like, yeah, what's up, man? It, it always brings a smile to my face, and it's super cool. But, the, I mean, the goal is still the same. I just want to grow the sport for juniors. Sometimes I get a little off track and just start creating random videos, and then I try and create one or two just trying to grow the sport for juniors. And, I mean, that's that's the main goal. Even when I'm a, an adult, 25, 30, that's going to be my main goal. I just want to get more kids into the sport so that the next era will always be amazing. Yeah. I think uh, one of the great things about your YouTube channel is that it's just very organic. And I think when you look at – you know, Simon Lazat, who has the biggest, uh, you know, kind of vlog and video channel for disc golf, his, his is very much the same. And there's a lot of similarities between, you know, what you're doing and what Simon's doing. So uh, be sure to go follow Luke, Disc Golf Kid, on YouTube. But before we let you go, we are going to hit you with some rapid fires. All right. You've probably seen these in some of our other videos. we got 10 questions. Uh, we got a couple couple extra fun ones in there we'll roll through these quick answer are you ready i'm i'm ready <laughs> you think you're ready oh <laughs> i think i'm ready yeah all right uh we start out easy and then and then we'll get a little bit harder as we go uh okay. favorite color pink pink great yep. color uh it's the last hole which would you rather have to execute a big drive or a big putt big drive for sure yeah if you f- don't follow luke on instagram he's got a monster backhand so uh, one course that you would love to play anywhere in the U.S. Anywhere in the U.S. Oh. Or abroad. Or what? Or abroad if you want. I really want to play the Beast in Finland. <laughs> That's probably my favorite course that I've ever watched anyone play on, and it's been a goal of mine to play on it. Nice. Uh, one driver, one mid-range, one putter for the whole round. What are you grabbing? Driver, I'm probably going to go with a Zeus, just because I can do so much with it. Mid-range is going to be a buzz, has to be a buzz, and then putter, a jawbreaker challenger. Because you can throw them and you can putt with them. Nice. Do you putt with Lunas normally or challengers? Challengers. Challengers. Nice. Um, one person, disc golf or not, that you would like to interview? Um, That's a good question. I think it would be fun to interview uh, like Tom Brady, or like one of the top guys in another sport, to see like how much the work ethic and all the things like that compare. Love it. I've had the same idea and thought about it. No one's ever uh, responded to my messages, but maybe, maybe one day. One day. <laughs> uh, one stays, one goes forever. Which one are you keeping, Pop Tarts or cereal? I'm gonna have to keep Pop Tarts. I think. Nice, good choice. Uh, your favorite video game? Uh, probably Rocket League. Regularly, <laughs> solid choice. Uh, you've interviewed a lot of pros this year. If you had to pick just one, who was your favorite? I mean, it has to be Paul. Just learned. <laughs> I learned so much from him in that video. Just the yeah. little things. It was super fun. Yeah, go check that one out over on Luke's YouTube again. Disc golf kid. Uh, I think it's at like twenty three or twenty four thousand views. Something like that. Yeah, it's doing awesome. Uh, you can only use one emoji for the rest of time. Which one are you picking? The laughing emoji. The one with, like, the tears coming out like that. <laughs> nice. Uh, so you have 106 videos on your YouTube. Yes, I counted. Uh, tell the viewers which one they need to go watch right after this. Oh, the first one. <laughs> the first <laughs> one. <laughs> if you go watch the first one and then, like, a more recent one, the first one, my voice was, like, so much higher pitched. And I think I was, like, five foot four, and now I'm six foot. And it was just so funny i just me and my dad just went back and watched it the other day and it was so funny 
Nice. That's hilarious. I'm probably going to go do that as soon as we sign yeah, off here. My uh, voice. You have to pay attention to the voice. <laughs> That's perfect. Well, we want to give you a, a minute to thank anybody that you would like to thank, any sort of shout outs. Uh, the floor is yours. Yeah, I mean, obviously, thanks to you guys for bringing me on here. Thanks to Discraft Underground for sponsoring me this season. Hopefully, I'll be with you guys again next season. But I've loved it so far. They, they've helped me out so much. Foundation Disc Golf has helped me out a lot. They were my first ever sponsor, actually, right before Junior Worlds last year. So go check them out at foundationdisc.com. And I think that's about it. Um, yeah, that's it. Make sure to go Perfect. check out my Instagram, YouTube channel, stuff like that. But thank you guys so much for having me. Absolutely. We will drop links to Luke's YouTube and Instagram down in the comments. So be sure to check both of those out. And let's let's see if you've watched our videos. At the end of the day, Luke, you only got to do one thing. What is it? Oh, I forgot. I just I just watched it and I had it memorized and I forgot. Make that putt.